Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Sacred Visibility Catalyst, Intentional Living Guide, and best-selling publisher, Linda Joy. For, God, almost three decades, I've been dedicated as an entrepreneur to supporting women and living their best lives, personally and professionally. So when I get to circle up with some extraordinary guests on this show, I got to tell you, I learn as much from my guests as you do. And today is a, a really special guest to me. We have known each other probably close to a decade. And I have followed her, her, her growth, her, her amazing um, gifts to her community, into the world. And I am so excited to bring you this conversation because we're going to be talking about breath work. And I remember the first time I heard it, I'm like, breath work? What? I mean, we breathe. And Tara has taught me so much over the years. Um, and that's why I know how important it is that she's with me today. So Tara Nieves Green is the founder of Breath Awakening and an international breathwork master practitioner and trainer and helps empowered individuals excavate and clear the unconscious triggers caused by their wounds and self-sabotaging beliefs so they can access their divine wisdom and inner truth to create a more authentic and passion-filled life. And I believe that's what we all yearn for. For close to two decades, Tara has been merging her education background and training with her deep commitment to personal healing. And that led her to the creation and birth of the Breath Awakening Practitioner Training. You can learn more about Tara at breathawakening.com. Welcome, my beautiful friend. Oh, thank you, Linda. It's wonderful to be here. And thank you for all that you offer our community and beyond all the wisdom and joy and inspiration. Well, my friend, we've known each other for a long time. And, and, I, and I'm one of those people, I'll be honest, when I first heard what you were doing way back when, I'm like, breath work, what is that? We all know how to breathe. And do you hear that often? Do you hear like, what is breath work? Yes, I do. I hear it often. Um, and I think because it's such a natural part of who we are, people underestimate the power it has to help us transform our lives. Actually, I'm saying that. And at the same time, because of what's happening in the world, um, people are becoming more and more aware of the importance of breath. And so I feel like we're in a time frame right now where um, where it's shifting, where more and more people are realizing, wow, if I um, master my breathing, I'm going to be able to master my state of being and navigate the, um, the ups and downs in life. And so, so yes, I hear it a lot. <laughs> and, um, and I'm excited to share you know, what breathwork is and how people can be utilizing it um, in their day to day life. Well, I found it so important as, you know, you and I have had so many personal conversations. For years, I was in anxiety and depression, you know, for 35 years. So, of course, I grew up and I had a learned breath pattern, which was always holding my breath. And, you know, in all these conversations since you and I have known each other and, and with other friends, I started being more aware of, okay, if I'm feeling stressed, most likely I'm holding my breath in that way. So let's, let's start at the beginning. Um, why do you recommend breath work to people? Yes, I recommend breath work to people because it is a modality that we have access to in every moment, in every moment, because it re just requires that we learn how to use the breath to shift our state of consciousness. And so every time we take a deep, full breath and every time we become conscious of our breathing, it brings us into the present moment. And when we're in the present moment, 
we have the ability to make really good decisions. If we are being pulled out of the present moment by worry or anxiety or concern, um, we end up being in a, in a fight or flight state of being. We're in this, this place where we're not really thinking very clearly. And we can use the breath to center ourselves, to take command of the present moment, to shift ourselves from that uh, fight or flight and bring ourselves back to center, activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and restore. It allows us to calm ourselves, get centered, and be present in the moment. And so it requires that we, we learn the breath patterns that, and there are so many different breath, breath patterns out there. It requires that we learn those breath patterns um, so that we can shift our state of consciousness, our state of being. And it, and it really does work because think of it like, um, I know for me, I remember when Nikki was young and if she'd get upset, I, it, was, it, it was natural for me to go, baby, baby, take a deep breath. Isn't it funny? Like I, I look back now because it's so organic, bring them back to their breath as a child to help them calm down. But until, you know, I saw, I knew we were having this conversation today and that memory came up for the first time in years. I'm like, look at how organic it was for me to bring a child, this is way back, because she's 37, back to their breath. That reminded me of how, how important it is that we are connected with our breath. Yeah, it's, it's so important, Linda. And um, taking that one step further, the more that we as um, adults and parents learn the full capacity of our breath, the easier it is to pass on to our children. And so when you're, you know, you see Nikki and she's needing to get centered and get present, taking a full breath and adding just, just that awareness that we can breathe really deeply into our body, that we can expand our low back, our rib cage, um, that we can get the breath in, not just in the upper chest, but in that lower half of the body. And when we, when we start to breathe into those parts where, where we tighten up, so let me clarify a little bit. When we get into that fear place, there's parts of our bodies that tighten. And so we tell, our, we tell someone to take a deep breath and if they're in that state of fear, it's hard to get the breath in there. And so by practicing breathing exercises with the children, with ourselves <laughs> um, ahead of time, and really not just in that time when we're in the panic, but ahead of time, when we start practicing then, we become aware when we're in a calm state of the full capacity of our breath. And we exercise that so that when we are in that panic state, we are able to get the fullness of the breath throughout the entire torso. And so I love to add that on because I see people um, saying, oh, take a deep breath. And they do this upper chest, uh, this upper chest breath that doesn't have much movement. And I'm like, okay, take a deep breath and now feel the, the low back, feel the rib cage, feel that expansion of the entire torso. Um, and, and tell me what happens then. It's a, it's a big difference because I've, as you know from personal conversations, I've always been a shallow breather because you're always in that fight or flight as a child, right? Yeah. So I know exactly what you mean, that feeling that you can only get air up to the bottom of your, um, where your solar plexus is. It's almost right. like constricted when you're in fear and anxiety. Right. And then the full breath actually feels like it's filling you up completely and you feel more of your body move. I've had to become so conscious of that. And of course, conversations with you over the years have helped me. Excellent. So that I can really relate that someone has to understand what it feels like in their body to know if they're taking a full breath. Exactly, exactly. And our children pick up on our patterns. Um, so, so if a, a parent has a certain breath pattern, the child's going to have that certain breath pattern. So as a parent reminding the kids to breathe deeply, um, but also exercising their own, um, or practicing on their own is going to be really helpful in shifting uh, it for themselves and their kids. Yeah. Mm, well, I've always said women in the nurturers of the next generation. So I think this is such an important topic. Yeah. And we're, we're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, you had mentioned that there's 
there's so many different breathing patterns. And are some, can some be used to help get centered, some to energize us, some to deepen our meditation? Do they all have different uses? And we'll talk about that when we come back, Tara. Excellent. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm here with the amazing Karen Nieves Green of breathawakening.com. Please swing by, visit our website, and of course, download your four part Breath Awakening gift set that's waiting for you. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Hey America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Today, we're talking about breath work. I'm here with Karen Nieves Green, founder of Breath, breath Awakening, who she's also an international breathwork master practitioner and trainer and founder of the Breath Awakening Practitioner Training. So um, earlier in um, the opening segment, you had mentioned that there's a lot of different breathing patterns. Can we use breathing patterns to support us in like whether we want to get centered or maybe we need to feel more energized or maybe we want to deepen our meditation? So talk about the different styles, Tara. Sure, sure. So there are so many different breath patterns out there and you when we learn how to utilize them, we can shift our state of consciousness. And so I love to talk about if you're the type of person where you're in your day to day and you're running around and you're doing 17,000 things at once. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah, so you've been holding the breath at the top and you're, you're realizing that you are just trying to cram so much in. And in this breath pattern, um, when when you have that type of, um, is, if that's your go-to breath pattern, um, you can find that you're depleted at the end of the day. And so for a person who holds their breath at the top and is rushing around, I recommend going to the slow, gentle, full nose breath to counterbalance that. And so it's it's there's many different um, many different techniques, but the, my favorite when I notice that I'm rushing around and is to go nice and slow in and feel the fullness of the entire torso. So I breathe in and I feel the low back and I feel the, the rib cage and I feel my shoulder blades. And then I breathe out nice and slow out my nose. And then I just pause at the bottom, at the bottom of the exhale when you're empty 
and I wait for the body to want to breathe again. And then I take another deep breath in and just doing three or four or five sets of that breath, nice and slow in, nice and slow out, pause at the bottom, just brings us calm. It just brings us into that calm centered place. So you see we're counterbalancing the energy of our normal state of being. So if we're, we're rushing around like crazy, we do the slow and calm. Now on the flip side of that, if you find that you're in a place that you're feeling low energy, you're feeling unsupported, exhausted, you, there's just, it feels like there's just not um, the, the motivation or the inspiration this is when I like to flip to an open mouth breath and circulate the breath a little faster. And so I like to drop the jaw open as if I just saw dolphins jumping out of the ocean. It's that. <sighs> so I drop the jaw open and I place a hand right over my solar plexus, um, which is kind of the upper abdomen. And I, when I breathe in, I feel my hand expanding. And I feel the fullness. And the moment I feel full, I don't overfill it. I just, the moment I feel full, I let the exhale fall out. And I let it fall out of my mouth. <sighs> just let it drop. I don't push it out. I don't contract any muscles. And I create a circular breath pattern. So it'll sound a little like this since we're on radio. <sighs> and I do that for about a minute. And I notice that when I'm breathing this way, I'm energizing myself. I feel a little more inspiration. And so I breathe that way. And sometimes if it feels a little tight in there, because sometimes we're feeling that low energy because we're constricted and we're not really moving much breath. So we feel low energy. So I circulate the breath like that. And then you'll hear it if, if you download the gift, you'll hear um, I take you through a variety of the breath patterns. But one of my favorite parts is um, wiggling and shaking the body. And I love the phrase, I, I wag my tail like a happy puppy. And so... And you can't do it without smiling. Like the moment you start pretending that you're a happy puppy, it's just a smile comes across your face. So I tell people, circulate the breath, open mouth, circular breathing. And then if they notice a little tightness, go ahead and shake your body and make the ah sound. Ah. And I love um, what happens after that is it, it creates a natural release in the body. And then we do a few more uh, rounds of that circular breathing with the mouth open and all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I feel energized and I feel a little less tension in my body, a little freer, a little more open-hearted and ready to go. So those are my favorites. That's so beautiful. It's funny because as you were speaking, I was trying not to make the noise because of the microphone, but I was shaking as you said it, I was <laughs> doing the breaths and feeling it. And, and you can feel the difference in your energy. It's instantaneous, especially the first one you did. It just brought me right into the moment, mm -hmm. um, even more so. So that's beautiful. And you're right when you talk about um, the happy puppy wagging the tail. You can't help but smile as soon as you hear the statement. <laughs> right. So, have in the in all the time that you've been doing the work that you do in the world, you work with thousands of clients, and you've noticed many hold do hold their breath. Can you tell us? you know, the two ways that may manifest and what the symptoms are. Like maybe someone listening right now, like me, remember when I first had my moment of awareness with you, mm -hmm. maybe they don't even realize they hold the breath because it's what they've done. That's all they know is a breathing pattern. Yes. Yeah. So um, our breathing patterns, our breathing patterns, we learn from the people around us and it is a, a survival mechanism. So depending on what's going on in, uh, or what has gone on in your life, um, we, over time, will constrict our breath to, or not over time, in the moment, we constrict our breath to navigate our emotions, to hold back. Because we learn at a very early age, probably around the age of five or six when we go to school, that we need to be in command of our emotions. And so we learn, we watch the grown-ups around us and we learn to constrict the breath. And um, this, when we constrict the breath, think about if you're, if you feel like you're going to cry and you don't want to do it in public, 
think about what muscles you tighten and it's different for each person. Or if you get really angry and you're like, okay, control yourself. Do not lash out at this person. This is not the time. This is not the place. It's not appropriate. So think about those things that we do in our physical body when we have an emotion come up that we want to control. So we learn very at a very early age how to do this. Now, what's the missing piece for some people, not everybody, but for some people, we don't receive the information or we don't get the skills to process those emotions once we get home from the meeting or once we get home from wherever we were where we weren't allowed to express that uh, emotion. We, we, we don't learn how to then process it so that it's cleared from our body. And instead, we just, over time, stack it on. <laughs> we just start um, compacting all of these unprocessed emotions until the place where it's so tight that we really have difficulty getting the breath moving through our body. And that's when we see the anxiety or the depression or the digestive issues or the sleep issues, all of the, um, yeah, all of these ways that, that the body is trying to tell us that, hey, you, you're carrying a lot. Um, so it manifests in the physical body in those ways. Um, and there's a, there's a whole list of, of different ailments that we could talk about. But overall, our health and well-being is directly, directly correlates with how much we have uh, been able, how much of the past we've been able to release and how present and fully we can breathe um, in each moment. Well, that's an important part of that conversation, too, when you said, you know, how much of the past you've um, released. So when someone begins breath work sessions with you and begins that journey, is it, so it sounds like it's a healing tool to help our body release the, I don't want to use the word trauma, but I'll, I guess I have to for this conversation, the trauma of the body that's been held in the memories is that true is my yeah. understanding of it true yes that is that is correct that this is this is a um this is a process that we go through breath work is a process that we can go through to help clear out the old energies that we've stored um and trauma is is a is a loaded word and so we can even just use experiences as a word like even little experiences that wouldn't be labeled as trauma can be lodged in the body um and i i love sharing the story of my very first breathwork session where um i went in completely uh, you know, basically, I'm one of those people that, you know, if if someone says, hey, try this, I'm like, oh, sure, let's do it. I had no clue what I was signing up for. So I go into my first breathwork session and my facilitator tells me to circulate the breath. And about 20 minutes into circulating the breath, I have a um, an interesting like sensation in my hip. And so I told him and he said, breathe into the hip. And then the very next moment, I am back 11 years in the past at a, an incident that happened in college, and it was an innocent in incident. I got embarrassed in front of a group of people um, when someone was unkind to me. And in that moment, 11 years back, when I got embarrassed, I tightened up, and I tightened my hip joints and my, my, my buttocks, and I, I locked my jaw at the same moment. Now, fast forward 11 years, I'm in that breathwork session. I have the interesting sensation in my hip. I have the memory come into my mind and I start crying. And I have a, a, just a very gentle crying release of that experience. Now, I get up from that session and I have this, um, I, I go on my way and the next morning I wake up and the chronic pain in my heel was gone. And the, very, the next morning I get up and it was gone again. And normally when I, for years I woke up and I would have this chronic pain in my heel. After that session, after the little bit of crying, that chronic pain went away. And so all of a sudden I put two and two together. I had held something in my hips that created a, a weird experience in my legs that manifested as chronic pain in the heel. It never came back after that session. And so when 
people come in for their breathwork session, I invite them to just breathe into any places in their body that feel tight. And then stay in that innocent place of just circulating the breath through their body and see what wants to release. And each time we come in, we have a different experience depending on what we're ready to let go of. And then in the times in between the sessions, people are, are noticing that they breathe more freely, that their experience in life is um, just a little lighter, a little freer, and they're breathing more easily. It's so beautiful and so powerful because when we hear the phrase breath work, a lot of people go, oh, I know how to breathe or how can this help me? And your, your explanations are giving me a deeper understanding of how it is such a powerful healing tool. Yes. Yes, it is. And so it got to give you so much um, fulfillment to be able to hold space because you've worked with thousands of people and now you're training practitioners to be able to hold space for such healing. Yes, it is. You know, I've been doing it now for, for close to 20 years and um, I delight every time someone has one of those breakthroughs, breakdowns, breakthroughs, releases um, every single time. It, it just brings such delight and joy to watch someone um, to, to watch someone clear out and, and emerge and find and really find their true sparkle. And uh, yeah, every, oh, I, I have the uh, blessing and the honor to support people in that, um, you know, almost every day. Well, that is a blessing. It's a blessing for them too. And we're going to take another break. When we come back, I want to talk about the different types of breathing patterns, like chest breathers, some are mouth, nosy, yeah, nosy, nose or, <laughs> or, or belly, because it's, like I said, someone listening right now, they're like, hmm, this is so interesting, but how do I identify where I am? So we'll talk about right. that and so much more when we come back from break. And again, I'm with Tara Nieves-Green, founder of breathawakening.com. Be sure to swing by. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM part of the IOM Radio Network. Does the energy in your life or home feel stuck or stagnant? Your home surroundings may be impacting your mood, energy level, and even how much money you attract. It's time to clear the energy blocks in your immediate surroundings so you can attract enhanced health, happiness, and abundance. Carrie Miller, feng shui expert, speaker, and coach, and the author of Feels Better, Flows Better, Feng Shui for Inspired Living, merges her sacred skills in Feng Shui, space clearing, aromatherapy, and coaching to support her clients in making subtle changes to their home that allow energy to flow and create spaces that are comfortable, functional, supportive, and inspiring. Whether you're called to clear one room or your full home, Carrie offers Feng Shui and energy clearing services on-site or virtually to meet your needs. Learn more at CarrieMillerConsulting.com. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. 
But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Hello, my friends. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and I'm here with Tara Nieves Green, founder of Breath Awakening. So, Tara, you know, you've shared that everyone has their own unique breath pattern, and that the way we breathe impacts our state of being. So, for those listening who are, you know, like, oh, I want to know more about this, what are some of the types of breathing patterns? I mentioned before the break, chest, mouth, nose, belly. How do we pay attention and know which, what is our go-to pattern? Yeah, so the, the simple way is just simply to get present with yourself and sit. And I often like, if I'm watching TV or if I'm doing something that's kind of mindless, all of a sudden I'll become aware of how the breath is moving through my body. And when I first, before I started breath work, um, I was a shallow breather like you. And as I started to practice, I noticed that, um, oh my goodness, I have a much fuller, more relaxed breath over time. So let's just talk about a few that you mentioned. Um, There are some people who breathe primarily in the upper chest with very little breath moving in the lower, in the lower body. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk in generalizations. Not everybody fits into this pattern, but generally um, people who breathe in the upper chest tend to be a little more, um, because the upper chest breath, if we're only breathing in the upper chest, it can bring on like low grade anxiety. So if we're if we're not getting enough breath moving through the body or if it's just in the upper chest, it it oftentimes will be that um that the there's a little more anxiety and so bringing the breath into the lower half of the body and feeling the fullness in the lower half um is is where we want to bring our attention. So the uh, a chest breather tends to be um, uh, the pattern I like to say is a little more anxiety, but also um, a little more overgiving. You know, I find that people who are primarily chest breathers will give, 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 uh, forgetting about their own needs and their own um, their own well of energy and so they'll overgive to the point where they're depleted and so reminding people to feel the breath in the lower belly and really activate that those lower chakras um, and really get rooted in the present then they don't have the tendency to overgive and so then there's some people who are primary primarily belly breathers and they breathe into the lower belly um, and they're not getting much breath up into the chest and this I find is that um, when we're holding a, a lot of grief, getting the breath up into the chest um, and and helping that uh, chest, the the chest and the heart, that heart center, the heart chakra to open more, um, there's a tendency that we close that down if we, we've been hurt or if we have grief there. So we shut down the heart um, so that we don't have to feel it. And so I tell belly breathers, find the breath in the belly and now move that energy up into the heart and allow that heart center to open again. And so those, those are the chest versus belly. Um, and then there's the nose versus mouth. So right now, there's a lot of talk in the breathwork community. Do you breathe through your nose or do you breathe through your mouth? And the studies are showing that nose breathing in our day-to-day life is really the way to go. And that when we nose breathe and we breathe gently through our nose, that in our day-to-day, you know, as we navigate the world, that this is uh, what supports our body the best. It it stimulates our immune system. It helps us stay calm and focused. And they are encouraging people who are mouth breathers to retrain themselves to breathe through their nose, that this is really, um, that the the science is showing that, that nose breathing is the way to go. Now, 
this this research coming out and and books being written about this, um, there's there's several that have just recently been published about um, nose versus. Um, has stirred up a lot of uh, energy in the breathwork community because a lot of breathwork practitioners use an open mouth breath to um, a, as their modality. And, and mine is a combination of mouth breathing and nose breathing. But what's happening or what the way that I have come to understand it is that when we are using the breath for a specific, as a specific tool, and we are using the breath to help clear out the old, an open mouth breath is really helpful in that. It, it maximizes the amount of breath that we can move through the body. It helps um, unlock the jaw. When we drop the mouth open and we unlock the jaw, it expands the, um, it helps relax and helps the rest of the body expand. And so, for a short period of time where we're, we're consciously and purposely using mouth breathing to help uh, stimulate and clear, um, clear out old energies, we use it um, very purposefully. And then we shift and we reintegrate and we calm and kind of so smooth over um, our energetic being with the nose breathing. I find that the combination of those two are, are a beautiful, um, they, co they complement each other really well. There's just so many insights, like I'm sitting there going, trying to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> and I know everyone listening, you've been doing the same thing I've been doing. Like, hmm, which one am I? And, you know, tapping into everything that Tara's saying. So, Tara, you've already shared, you know, why all of this is so important for us to be aware of, because it all begins with awareness, right? right. Uh, and by honoring and listening to our breath from that place of awareness, we can choose something differently. Um, what's the average person when they come to you? Do they come because it's like they know they are ready? They, are they, did they walk in cold like you did many years ago? Like, when does someone know? they're ready for a breathwork session. Oh, so it's different for every person. It's different for every person um, because breathwork meets so many different needs. Um, so I have people who know that they're ready for breathwork because their doctor said, hey, I've heard of this woman who does breathwork and I really think it's going to help you with these particular um, health issues that you're having. And so I get a lot of people, I have uh, several chiropractors, um, neuropsychologists, uh, neurologists who um, refer people saying, I think this breathing thing is gonna really help um, and complement what you're doing in your, in, with, with the work with their medical prof uh, prof professionals. Um, and so from a physical standpoint, it's, it's something that's going to help them heal more quickly. And then I have people who, um, from an emotional perspective, they are, you know, they're hearing about these breathing techniques. They go online, they watch, they're not, it, it's not quite working the way that they thought it would. And someone says, hey, you know, going to see Tara might actually help you understand the breathing and figure out what way works best for you. And so people um, will come to me because they're experiencing anxiety, depression, um, anger issues, et cetera. Um, and so there's the emotional component where people, um, people are drawn to it from that place. Um, and then there's the spiritual, the spiritual component where um, people who are sensitive to energies and connecting into uh, their higher powers or connecting with their higher powers, um, breath work can enhance that as well. So, um, and regardless of your, your, uh, which religion you belong to or which spiritual community you belong to, the breath in, in many, I'm going to do a little side note, in many languages, the word for breath, spirit, God are all the same word. When you think of spiritus or resp respiration, um, it, the, so the root is that the breath is the, 
the spirit running through our body. And so people, um, people who want to enhance that connection with their higher power will often be drawn to doing breath work. And they notice that the, um, the more that they clear out the old energies from their physical body, the, the clearer channel they become um, in, in being, uh, bringing heaven to, to, to our planet. <laughs> um, it allows them to be that flow and, and be present with the divine that lives within them. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, explanation. Before we take our last break, I just want to clarify, you're able to see um, clients virtually and in person. Breathwork can be done both. Yes, yes. So for, for majority, of my, uh, majority of my career as a breathwork practitioner, I had the belief that we could only do breathwork in person. Or maybe whether it was a belief or just a preference, I loved doing breathwork in person. And for years, people have been asking me to do it virtually. And I was, I, you know, resisted. And, you know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, when COVID hit, um, I quickly pivoted like the rest of the world. And I started learning how to do breath work um, virtually. And so now, um, at this point in time, I'm only doing virtual sessions. Um, and am absolutely astounded and blown away and so grateful that it is equally as powerful doing this virtually as it is doing it in person. Um, and it's quite magical um, to be here in Massachusetts and doing breath work with someone in Kuwait or in London or, um, you know, LA. It's quite magical to be, be watching someone breathe and to be able to facilitate and hold space for them um, at such a far distance. And, and so, yes, it's, it's just equally as powerful. And I encourage people to, um, to experience it. Uh, those, those who are non-believers like I used to be, um, who say, no, no, we got to do it in person. I encourage people to, um, to experience it in the virtual realms. Well, thank you for clarifying, because I know the women that are listening may have been wondering that too. So I wanted to clarify before we take our final break. You can learn more about working with Tara and all her other amazing services at breathawakening.com. We'll be back for our final segment. We'll see you in a moment. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you ready to design your best life by living from your yes instead of allowing your fears and self-doubts to run the show? It's possible when you tap into and live from your inner wisdom. As an intuitive transformational life coach, Dr. Lisa Thompson merges her background as a scientist with her intuitive gifts to support and empower women just like you to embrace self-love, trust their intuition, and gracefully move forward through their fears so they can intentionally design their best life. Along with offering a variety of programs and eco-spiritual retreats, Dr. Lisa intuitively customizes her private client experiences using one or a combination of healing modalities, including past life regression, human design, and more. It's time to say yes to living your best life. Learn more at drlisajthompson.com. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. 
The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back, my friends. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. And with me today is the founder of Breath Awakening, Tara Nieves Green. So, Tara, one of the things that um, has really come through this conversation is, you know, there's some healing modalities out there. You have to, you have to, you, you need things to be able to get it done. This, they just need their breath. They need their presence. And of course, um, when they're ready, they need a guide to guide them through. And to me, that is powerful. You know, that they have the power to use their breath to help heal themselves on a variety of levels. So, one of the things I wanted to have you share is what can someone expect from a breathwork session, whether it's virtually or not? Let's use virtual just because so many of our listeners may be. So what does a session actually feel and look like? Yeah, so a session, um, when a person arrives, the, the first part of the session is talking. And so I just want to get to know um, this person's story and, and hear their history. And what I love is that while someone's, while someone's sharing their history with me, um, I get to see how their breathing and their body responds to their story. And this starts as the practitioner, I'm starting to gather information about where this might live in the person's body, you know, as they're sharing their story. And I tell people, you can share as much as you want or as little as you feel comfortable, you know, just sharing what's comfortable for a person. And so we spend you know, 20 to 30 minutes in, um, in conversation, just me getting to know, um, getting to know them. And then I, we shift because that's the seated portion. Then we shift and I have them go to their breathing nest and they get instructions on how to set up a breathing nest. It's their pillows and blankets and they get comfy and cozy. And now I get to see them breathe um, and I get to watch the breath and I give them a very particular pattern. So I, I give them um, a pattern that I'd like them to um, to mimic and I guide them through that. And as they're breathing and they're the breath is circulating through their body, I then coach them as to where they're going to place their hands to put pressure to help open the breath or clear out some old energy. And so I'm guiding them through while they're circulating the breath through their body. And I'm, I'm coaching them during that time. And that, that portion takes anywhere from a half hour to an hour, depending on how the person's body is responding to the breath moving through. And um, during that time, people have all different um, experiences and sensations, um, depending on who they are and uh, basically what energy they're bringing into the session with them. So each session is really different. And then at the end, after the person is um, in a very relaxed and, and clear state, we talk about um, what they experienced, and we answer any questions they had, and then we talk about a plan of action, like how, you know, um, a daily practice and what breath patterns that would work best for them, and um, and then we, you know, I recommend anywhere between five and seven sessions to really retrain the body to breathe uh, most effectively. And I love that, you know, the best invention in the world is Zoom, right? Because oh. you're sitting, you're in where you are in Massachusetts and they're lying there and the way they have the camera set up, you can watch the rise in the um, dropping of their chest and abdomen. That's how you know their breathing pattern. You can see it. Yeah, I can see it. And um, yeah, I can see it very clearly. Um, thank God for Zoom. And I also, um, you know, as we tune in, I can see it, but I also tune in energetically and this is the magical part is that we can tune in energetically and I'm scanning their body um, energetically and noticing where the blocks are and then coaching them to put pressure on that those parts of the body um, sometimes I do that verbally but what I found really interesting like the other day there was a woman I was like oh if I were in person and I'm thinking this I did not say it out loud I was like if I were in person I'd want I'd, I'd you know help her or 
ask her to move her legs back and forth, or I'd rock her legs back and forth. Um, and all of a sudden, no lie, she starts rocking her legs back and forth. And I'm like, oh, I just thought that thought and she did it. <laughs> there she goes rocking her legs. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I said, it's magical. And so this is not the first time that that has happened where, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, geez, they, you know, just the thought, oh, their shoulders are a little tight. Maybe if they roll them down and back and I don't even have to say the words and they're rolling their shoulders down and back. So it's the, it's beautiful. The, the breath tells us so much and, um, and energetically we get connected to during the session. And so those magical things happen. Yeah, I was just going to say, and, and earlier you described that prior to the session with you, you send them instructions to make, and I love the name, a breathing nest with pillows and blankies. I'm like, oh, nest. Does, doesn't that sound like so comforting in a place of trust? It's like you, you already got them into that relaxed state, having them build their nest. Yes. Yeah. You know, that, just that the phrase was so sacred to me. It's like they're cocooned, you're safe. I'm here. I've got mm -hmm. you. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. beautiful, Carla. We have a total of five minutes left we have, before we have to close. Is there a really short, like two minutes or less, that you could guide the listeners through? Sure. Sure. I'd be happy to do that. Um, with two minutes, I, I say we do a breath awareness exercise. How's that sound? That's perfect. And do you have a clock that you can watch so I don't have to interrupt you? Yes, I'm going to turn it. I'm going to look at it right now. Yes. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm ready. Oh, so I invite everyone to get comfortable. And please don't do this while you're driving. So if you happen to be listening to this while you're driving, not now, wait till you get home. So I invite you to close your eyes, get comfortable. And First, notice where the surface below you is supporting your body. Notice those contact points. And then take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And as you exhale, imagine you're melting into the surface below you, really creating contact and softening the body. And now I invite you to place a hand right below your belly button and a hand in the center of your upper chest. Let it fall out and do one more of those. And this time with a little sigh. <sighs> Beautiful. Floating the eyes open and coming back to your natural breath. Hmm, do I have to come back? Yes, come back. We have yeah. to finish the interview. <laughs> yeah, it's so beautiful. I, and I gotta tell you, the, the breath awareness exercise, I always love it, just brings me right into the moment. Mm. And I want to invite everyone, as we come to a close of our sacred conversation with Tara, visit breathawakening.com, download your four-part breath awakening gift set. Tara has a beautiful gift set to help you learn to connect with your breath. And again, that's breathawakening.com. Tara, thank you. Thank you, my friend, for your presence in my life and your presence here today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me here today. Until next Tuesday, everyone, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.